All right, welcome to another episode of Fun Never Ends with Nelson and Friends, broadcasting live from my home in West Covina, California. It's a beautiful day in SoCal, and we got a great show for you today. We have the amazing Paul Shortino. You know him from Rough Cut, King Cobra, Raiding the Rock Vault, Cry Quiet Riot. Sorry, I can't talk. Um, and you, can, like I said, Raiding the Rock Vault and. Uh, some solo stuff he did. Uh, 1999, he released his uh, album Shortino. It was called Stand and Fall. Ladies and gentlemen, Mr. Paul Shortino, the Duke fame from Spinal Tap. Paul, how you doing, buddy? Good, good, good. Fighting off the flu that uh, is going around here in Las Vegas. Uh, oh, man. You know, it's a... It's, uh, it's, uh, Vegas strong right now, seeing how what happened just recently. Uh, yeah, I'm glad you guys are safe, you, Carmen, and everybody in the Rockwell family. Yeah, actually, um, Robin and those guys, actually, when they go home on Wednesday night, they go right by that area that the shooting uh, uh, happened, right by Mandalay Bay, to get on the freeway. So, uh, actually, uh, that night, uh, Carmen had called me and said that there was a sniper shooting, and I uh, yeah. let... Phil Susan, who was riding with Robin McCauley, uh, let them know that they uh, should avoid that area. And um, they re- rerouted their way home. But what a horrific experience here. Yeah, it was a horrific and, um, tragedy. Yeah, unbelievable. And I'm sure a lot of those people that were at that show had been to Raiding the Rock Vault many times. So my uh, uh, prayers go out to the family and friends for uh, of all those people that were injured and the ones that have passed such a tragedy it is and hopefully um, they could find some way to prevent it or something have something indoor but you never know what's going to happen you got to live it day by day yeah well ever since 9 11 everything has changed it seems like uh uh immensely and yeah. Every, everything is just uh, the world is in turmoil and uh, needs to be a lot more love. Don't you think, Nelson? We all need to be loving oh, each yeah. other instead of said all the hate that's going on. And so I pray every day that everybody can just have a lot more big love in the world instead of all the big hate that's going on and yeah, very move cool. forward. Exactly, man. Um, talk about I just uh, did a. Oh yeah, go ahead. Go ahead. No, I'm sorry. I was go just going to share that. I just uh, I just uh, did a thing with Carmine and Vinny. They oh, yeah, the um, are releasing their yeah they're releasing their album. I did a few songs on there, but uh, four years ago, or uh, well, uh, we wrote a song, uh, a tribute to Ronnie with some of his own lyrics and some of my lyrics combined, mm-hmm. cleverly put together called Monsters and Heroes. So we recently. Uh, shot a video but the song originally was going to go on a um, stand up and shout album uh to raise money for ronnie's uh cancer yeah fun and uh, uh for some reason it didn't make it on there and didn't make it on the king cobra record either so uh, i guess they uh, decided to release that so that's uh that's something that's that people should be looking forward to yeah, I saw that posting uh, a few days ago, and it, and I'm digging on it. Yeah, it's a, it's a cool song. Um, it's kind of cleverly written, you know. Um, yeah. Uh, with some of Ronnie's uh, lyrics in there, uh, phrases that yeah. uh, from different songs, and um, uh, it was it was a tribute to him, uh, mm-hmm. and uh, I never expected. Uh, them to release it on their album it was like i said it was it was for a specific reason the song was originally written uh, about uh things that go bump in the night yeah. when you're a kid being afraid of stuff under the bed and, <laughs> and, and and those are the monsters and then your heroes were you know like superman and yeah and batman and and uh, i thought wow that's just not and then all of a sudden this uh Dio thing came up where they were going to release uh, an album mm-hmm. there was some tracks on it to raise money for the fu- uh, foundation and mm-hmm. uh, so then I changed the th- direction of thought of the song and made it a tribute to Ronnie 
Yeah. And that's how it came about to be about Ronnie and with some of his his lyrics in the uh, song. So it's interesting how years went by and now it's it's come out. And uh, I believe they're going to take some of the funds and put it towards that. Yeah. I know Ronnie was a big mentor for you during your days. Your oh, big days. time. Such such a beautiful human being and a great heart. and. Mm-hmm. A huge voice. Oh, yeah. I got to see him <laughs> back in 2008 with Heaven and Hell when they did the Metal Masters tour out here in Glen Helen with Priest, Motorhead, and Testament. That was the one and only time I got to see Ronnie with Vinny, Tony, and Geezer, and what an amazing show. Wow, I bet it was. I never, I, I never was fortunate. I wasn't ever fortunate to see him uh, in, uh, in, that, in that realm. Yeah. But uh, I, uh, I was honored to go through the Holy Diver and watch him put that whole thing together in the album yeah. cover and piece by piece and listen to the demos every night and he'd ask me what <laughs> I thought and what do you think of this track? Wow, man, it's knock 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 me off my socks, you know. Not only that, you were what a great guy on uh, uh, Here and Aid. We're stars. Yeah. That was yeah, a I that was a fantastic track with so many great vocalists and so many great musicians on that track. Oh, talk it was, about how and, uh, the recording was for that. Uh, it was like uh, well, first of all, Rough Cut just got had just gotten signed, and we had just finished uh, our record, and uh, and to be around all those rock stars was like a dream come true. <coughs> Uh, I was kind of in awe. I was very honored to be be one of the singers on it because uh, I'm sure there were a lot of great singers that would have liked to to <laughs> had taken my place. And I uh, I was uh, I was very grateful to be able to be a part of it. And uh, and it, it was just uh, it was an amazing uh, amazing event uh, to see all these great artists together and all these great talent mm-hmm. with no everybody putting their egos away and yeah. and going in there for a, a great reason to try to raise awareness of mm-hmm. people starving in in africa and and around the world still yeah uh, that uh we tried to do our part and and try to raise awareness and some some funds for it and uh it was just a a, a, a magnificent uh journey yep. doing that whole that whole project and uh, i i would i'm really grateful and honored to, to have been a part of that yeah it's a great uh, it's a great one it took me forever to find and surprisingly enough i found it uh, on amazon and you remember i had brought it to you to sign after the show one yeah day. that was that was cool um i don't even have that <laughs> <laughs> I would think you had the at least the seven inch or something of. Yeah, that. I probably did at one time, and then it <laughs> kind of got lost in the shuffle and moving. Oh, I've got man. some vinyl. I don't know what I've got in there. Maybe I do have it. But I just finally got a turntable, and, mm-hmm. and um, so I'm going to be able to to actually listen to some of my vinyl because I am kind of just kind of put those away for a yeah. long time because uh, everything just uh, went to digital world. Yeah, I hear and, you. Uh, it's nothing like the old vinyl. Oh, and, no. Uh, that uh, rough cut, and uh, and I just got back from Japan with a Japanese band that I worked with oh, over yeah. there. And How I'm was doing that? A, that was awesome. Um, uh, Nozumo and June, uh, uh, the band uh, is just, uh, we're actually working on a record, hmm. and uh we uh, we do stars, and I'm doing a show in my hometown here uh, on the 21st of October. Elktoberfest. With a yes, and a drummer that was on the um, Paul Shortino the Cut album, a mm-hmm. solo album that I put out. Uh, John Homan, mm-hmm. uh, his band is in uh, Columbus, and so they're um, they've learned a bunch of rough cut songs and some Quiet Riot and some mm-hmm. King Cobra. And uh, some Jeff Northrup back on track, some of that stuff. And then we they put a uh, 
a medley together of uh, of uh, we're stars going into Rainbow in the Dark. Oh, that then is so we're the awesome. last in line, and then uh, ending <laughs> with uh, Heaven and Hell. So we're doing a, like a tribute to Ronnie and a tribute to Kevin mm-hmm. on some uh, a few Quiet Riot songs that yeah. um, Metal Health and uh, Wild and the Young, and then I'm doing some of uh, the Quiet Riot songs, uh, Stay with Me Tonight and Don't Want to Be Your Fool. So uh, I did those same. Same songs, except for the, uh, we just ended with Stars when I did the mm-hmm. Japanese tour, and that was really a lot of fun. And you did Stars when uh, Rough Cut was um, doing the Monsters of Rock pre-cruise party, as well as when you guys played the Whiskey A Go-Go and Vamped, so the Whiskey featured Robin, and then yes. the Vamped one featured Mark Bowles. Right, and we're going to do Vamped here on November 11th. Yeah. And uh, Robin's going to join us on Stars. That's so. Cool. That's our. Uh, yeah, yeah. It, it really is. Um, it's it's a great song, and uh, mm-hmm. it's 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 it re- it brings back great memories too when when we do it. So, yeah. uh, and uh, always great to have my brother from another up there with me, Rob McCauley. Yeah, I had a good chat with him on Thursday night. That was a fun one. I'll bet it was. He's getting ready, geared up to go out with Shanker. We just did a, a thing here in Las Vegas called Conversations with Norm. And, oh yeah, uh, I saw that. Carmen had shared that. That was awesome. Talk yeah, it was really that. great for us to do a acoustic thing and just talk mm-hmm. about. You know, it was like rock tales and cocktails, uh, <laughs> uh, and uh, we did you know songs that. You know, we did What a Wonderful World and Happy Together from the Turtles and Forever Young. Yeah. And uh, we just, you know, we just pulling out some songs that, you know, not from our normal genre of music. And it was <laughs> uh, it was a lot of fun to do together. We're going to we plan on doing a few more of those things. Uh, it was a lot of fun to do that and uh, step out of our genre of music yeah. and and let people hear us do stuff that's from a whole different uh, era. There's no limitations when it comes to music. Never. Not at all. Not at all. It's a universal language, definitely. Oh, yeah. it speaks to everyone. Uh, talk a little bit about your time in Quiet Riot and releasing that album with, uh, at the time, it was you, uh, Carlos Cavazzo, and Sean McNabb. Yeah, and Frankie Benelli, and also uh, the keyboard player from uh, Alcatraz, oh, Jimmy, Jimmy Waldo. Waldo. I actually saw him yeah. last night with New England. Oh, really? And they played yeah. up here in Upland, so that was a great one. Uh, uh, yeah, talk more well, about that. Well, it was uh, – actually, we worked um, – uh, actually, I was in uh, – we approached uh, to, ch- ch- you know, check out Quiet Riot. Yeah. So uh, we – I went down to the studio and I sang the wild and the young and a few other songs. And, um, then, uh, they had like one record left to do with Pasha. Mm-hmm. And, um, so they were kind of keeping me once they decided that they really wanted me in the band. Uh, we were trying to keep it low key and do the last record without, uh, uh, re-signing with Pasha and going yeah. direct with CBS. So um, that didn't work out. And then we went in and cut some tracks and went into, you know, renegotiating the contract and all of that stuff for a year. And um, But it uh, beyond that, we spent a year of working on material, yeah. uh, which was great. Uh, with Jimmy Waldo at his studio, it was Frankie, me, Carlos, and Jimmy Waldo and working on material for uh for about a year and then uh decided to go into the studio and record uh the record and it uh uh turned out great it was something totally different than uh, the original quiet riot um mm-hmm. more of a bluesier direction and um it was an honor to be in the band and uh and and uh an honor to uh try to fill the shoes of Kevin DeBro, which, were, you know, he, mm-hmm. there's only one Kevin DeBro in the world, and God rest his soul. Oh, yeah. We were good friends. 
we all became really good friends during the stars uh, mm-hmm. uh, record mm-hmm. and because um, back then everybody you know in the Hollywood scene was their band was the best band and you know and there was always this competition thing and, yeah uh, actually when we all went and did the stars things and it just kind of opened the door for more become friends yeah uh and, and it, on a different level mm-hmm. than in, in a competing level uh uh you know when you're playing around town and mm-hmm. uh uh you're caught co- you're in competition with the other bands that that you're playing with uh and so in 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 an in, in an innocent realm not yeah. not in a in a in, in a in a realm of you know egotistical that's yeah uh you know, you think your band's the best band and we're the greatest and, you know, you're young with piss and vinegar. You find out that, you know, there's more to life than that. It's it's uh, more about being grateful and sharing the love. So it, uh, we became really good friends and unfortunately uh, Kevin left the band and uh, mm-hmm. I was brought in to fill his shoes and mm-hmm. we went off into a little bit of a different direction and... Uh, it was a great time in my life uh, and great experiences when we went out on the road. We didn't tour the U.S. Mm-hmm. We played South America, Japan, and uh, and I regret not uh, doing another record with the band. I, uh, I walked away from the band and um, out of frustration. And uh, yeah. my mother was uh, ill and Frankie's mother was ill, so we, we were kind of deadlock and not being able to go out on the do some tours in the united states so uh it kind of the band came to a halt mm-hmm. with uh left in good we left on good terms and which is uh which is good always good to do because this business is too uh it's a small circle of mm-hmm. of people you know yeah you uh you know the people that you uh you know that you step on are the ones that you know. Uh, if, if, if you're if you're mean to people on the on the way down or on the way up, then uh, mm-hmm. you know they're still there on your way down. So <laughs> you you know it's it's better to just try to stay friends with everyone and and yeah. try to keep a neutral balance in in the music business. Uh, however, that was a great time and uh, a great record. I thought um, some of my best work. I really enjoyed working with Spencer. And the band. That's awesome. Um, yeah, I was listening to that record um, actually earlier today, and I was like, "Oh man, it sounded amazing!" Just like every track on that album sounded great. Well, actually, "Stay with Me Tonight" was supposed to be on a Rough Cut record, and it never made it. So mm-hmm. I took it to Quiet Riot, and we changed it around, and uh, turned out to be a pretty cool track. That's awesome. Um, you did, uh, how were you approached for, uh, the part of Duke fame for Spinal Tap? Now that was when Rough Cut was together with Jake mm-hmm. and, um, we were, uh, playing the Troubadour yeah. and, um, Wendy Dio, uh, Nietzsche management had, uh, placed an ad in, uh, local, uh, I think it was BAM magazine and some other local magazines and a uh, picture of the band and, uh, and, uh, the casting, uh, uh, lady, uh, for the, uh, spinal tap had seen the picture in the paper and came to the troubadour and asked us to, uh, myself, Dave Alford and Jake to, uh, come do a casting call the next day after we performed at the troubadour. Mm-hmm. So I showed up first, and I showed up in my white leather and black boots that I was wearing on stage, and mm-hmm. uh, I walked in and met Rob Reiner, and a, I think Christopher Guest was there, maybe, and and um, I did a little interview, and uh, casting and crew, or the casting lady and the wardrobe said, well, that's Duke Fame. Mm-hmm. He's already dressed for the part. We don't even have to dress him, and... Uh, <laughs> I got the part. I just awesome. showed up first. I think, I think if anybody else in the band would have showed up, maybe they would have gotten the part. I just uh, was fortunate to show up first, and mm-hmm. and then when we shot it, it was all ad lib. Mm-hmm. 
So uh, we shot it, and uh, that scene was shot at the uh, Holiday Inn in Burbank. Oh wow! In the uh, in the lobby, and um, Paul or uh, Paul Benedict uh, was the uh, hotel clerk, and uh, Howard Hessman was my manager, and uh, I was playing the Normo Dome. And what's funny about that is I was sitting there with uh, the girl who um, was. Uh, my arm piece in the scene she uh, actually was jackson brown's ex-girlfriend and was sitting there sharing with me uh that uh jackson had left her mm-hmm. uh, for daryl hannah when she came out with splash yeah. and um i went wow because she was a pretty girl and uh yeah. i was sitting there going wow you know these guys are having a bad hair day i was watching them film Mm-hmm. And I didn't know they were wearing wigs, so we <laughs> took a lunch break, uh-huh. and I'm sitting next to Rob Reiner trying to get Rough Cut songs, because mm-hmm. Rough Cut at that time hadn't been signed yet. Yeah. So here I'm playing a rock star, and I'm not even a rock star. Uh, even though in not, when I was 17, in 1972, I released a record called Follow Me on Bell Records. Mm-hmm. And it was uh, with... Uh, Originally, it was with Mickey Dolan's sister, Coco Dolan's, Mm -hmm. and uh, it was a song called Follow Me with, uh, uh, it was on Billboard with a bullet for uh, number 22, and so that was my claim to fame before I even was signed with Rough Cut, so here I'm sitting there, and I'm supposed to be playing a rock star, and I'm not a rock star, and haven't been signed yet, and we're struggling to get a, a, a deal. And so I'm sitting talking to Rob Reiner, trying to push songs off to him. And he's saying, mm-hmm. no, we've got material. My, my big bottom, my girl's mm-hmm. got them. And he was explaining to me. And I'm sitting across from the cast, Michael uh-huh. McKeon, and Christopher Guest, and Harry Shear. And, and I'm going, you guys look like the guys that are having a bad hair day. And they go, dude, we are the guys, <laughs> you know, because they didn't have their wigs on. And yeah. I, 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 so I felt like an idiot. And put my foot right in my mouth. But um, other than that, it was uh, it was an amazing day. That shoot. Uh, I never expected uh, uh, when I went and saw it uh, all of the clever things they said about me because I uh, uh, I I just did my part, you know. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And 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 then when I went and saw it, I went, oh, they called me a wanker and all this stuff. <laughs> ah. Yeah. Oh man, and I rewatched that movie. But what a great, what a great! I tell you, it's followed me around no matter what. Uh, even in Rock Vault, you know, mm-hmm. one night we got locked in the vault, you know, the Spinal Tap moment, mm-hmm. you know. So, uh, you know, got left on the road. I mean, it's followed me around since I've done that movie. There's been a Spinal Tap moment every night somewhere in my life, uh, <laughs> performing. So. Yeah. Talk a little bit about uh, the early days of Rough Cut. Um, I actually found a, the first Rough Cut vinyl over at a record store in Hollywood. I had posted about that. Uh, man, I listened to that record. It's so awesome. The way you do that uh, Janis Joplin song is amazing. That was a clever uh, way we uh, did that. We took like Wild Thing and put it to Peace of My Heart. And- yeah. That's how we came up with that that version. And um, Janis Joplin was uh, um, I really I really dug her at, at, for a female singer. Mm-hmm. Uh, she had a lot of grit to her voice, and I uh, I was a big fan of hers. So uh, it, it was pretty much like a dedication to Janis. Mm-hmm. That was a great record. I really. Uh, uh, the production on that, and I put headphones on and listen to Dreaming again. That's uh, it's some great stuff going on there. Tom Allen did a great job in producing that record. And Dreaming again, that was the one you that was your brother's favorite song, wasn't it? Uh, no, and that uh, Night Cries Out for Night You uh, was uh, my brother Joe's favorite song. He uh, he would play that over and over and over. Dreaming again got the band signed. That's a great uh, with song. With Warner Brothers. Yeah. Love it. Taker. Yeah, we actually. Oh, yeah, actually, uh, Taker. Um, that that uh, was when Greg, uh, Craig Goldie was in the band, and we put that together. 
he uh, co-wrote that with us. And actually, uh, uh, the version that Ron we did with Ronnie, we did a video before mm-hmm. uh, we were signed, and uh, with the version that we recorded with Ronnie, and uh, it was a little rawer than the uh, than the one on the Rough Cut album. Mm-hmm. Do you still have that uh, track with uh, Ronnie and Craig? Oh yeah, yeah, that's absolutely. I think that was. Uh, I think that's on um, uh, uh, either the best of uh, unsigned bands on mm-hmm. the Troubadour album or uh, Rock to Riches. I think one of those. I know used and abused. Uh, mm-hmm. Uh, early rough cut track was on one of those records which was a contest uh klos was running a contest for local bands and we were one of the few bands that were on that uh album that uh were i guess uh runner-ups i don't remember who actually won but Mm -hmm. they took there was 10 bands that ended up being they put a record out and so did the troubadour uh, of certain bands that uh, I guess drew well. At the, I don't know how they worked that out, but uh, we were on the best unsigned LA bands from the Troubadour. There was a, uh, a LP that was released, and then there was this contest for KLOS, and mm-hmm. we uh, I think Try a Little Harder was on that. That's cool. I'm gonna have to definitely look that up. So. I'll send it to you. Sounds good. I can MP, I can MP three I can MP three that to you. Okay, sounds good. I look forward to that. Thank you. Um, how did you get approached for rating the Rock Vault? I remember I recalled the first show being at the Mayan Theater in L.A., which would progress later on to the LVH and Trop, and where you guys are now at the Vinyl Room. Well, how it, uh, actually I was approached. Um, it was really weird. I was talking. I did the Dio Memorial and uh, and did in my life, and I was approached by John Payne, and, and uh, later on, out of the blue, he t- uh, got a hold of me and asked me if I would track a song, and I did Honky Tonk Woman, but I had no idea what was what it was for, and um, at the same time, um, I spoke to Paul Dexter, who was telling me that he was working with uh, Sir Harry Cowell and some other people and John Payne on this um, this show, rock and roll classic show. And I and he was putting together the staging and, and all of the uh, video footage and storyline and mm-hmm. stuff like that. So out of the blue, uh, after I did the track, out of the blue, John Payne showed up in Las Vegas and asked me to meet with him and and uh, asked if I'd be interested in um, doing a project, Yeah, this classic rock project. And I said, sure. So out of the blue, they got a hold of me and um, I drove to Los Angeles and had a one day rehearsal and then we we're in this rehearsal hall and the guys had been in there for, uh, Robin and Howard and Mm -hmm. the rest of the cast had been, uh, in the rehearsal for like about two weeks, 14 days. And, um, they were rehearsing all of these classic rock songs and Mm -hmm. nobody really knew what was gonna, you know, what was the outcome, what we were doing it for. And Mm -hmm. then we went to the Mayan theater and then we saw this production and went, wow, this is going to be intense. Mm-hmm. So uh, we filmed, uh, we rehearsed uh, the back half of it. Uh, we filmed it for the sizzle, and then the day of the show, we filmed the rest of the front of it and performed that night. And uh, it came off amazing. Mm-hmm. Uh, and uh, then I got a call and asked um, if I could, uh, if I knew anybody here in Las Vegas that um, would be interested in, uh, uh, you know, having a show like that in a showroom, and so I, uh, I reached out to some friends and got a meeting with Rick White, mm-hmm. and uh, next thing I know, we were going, we went into the LVH, which is now the Westgate, yeah, and uh, started 
performing uh, rock, raiding the rock vault on the same stage that Elvis performed on. So it was kind of a, uh, an amazing journey how mm. it just went so quickly. Yeah. You know, uh, and we were we were in the showroom, I think, a, a week or ten days after we had did the, the uh, show at the Mayan. And yeah. uh, now it's been going on for four years. And now we're at the Hard Rock. We went to the Tropicana. We were there for a year and a half. We were at the Westgate or the LVH, and then it turned into the Westgate for a year and a half. And uh, now we're at, at the Hard Rock. And uh, last night we had an amazing sold-out show considering the tragedy that we had here in Las Vegas. Yeah, when uh, so, that had happened, I was like, I was actually so glad that you guys are no longer at the Trop. I mean, it would have been complete chaos oh no doubt being across the street from that shooting yeah, uh, yeah. Uh, I think the show is where it should be um, uh, hard you know the rock vault at the hard rock seems like appropriate oh, yeah, place for true. you know and it's more intimate it's a smaller venue however it's more intimate and uh, we're closer to the people yeah. and uh Angelo Curry is doing a good job on the sound. Um, yeah, it sounds great. And I was there that opening night, and you know, the staging looked great. Everything sounded fantastic. Smaller, smaller stage. Uh, we had to get used to that. That yeah. uh, the 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 smaller stage. Seeing how we went from Elvis's stage, and then we yeah. went to another large stage, which was the Trop, one of the second largest stages in uh, Las Vegas. Uh, old school, yeah. and um, so uh, yeah, I'm uh, I'm excited that the show's still going strong. It's a uh, it's a heck of a lot of fun. Um, great cast of people: Rob oh, McCauley, yeah. Howard Lees, Doug Aldridge, Tracy Guns comes and goes, and so does Doug and uh, Hugh Mc, uh, Hugh McDonald from Bon Jovi yeah. and uh, Jay Shellen. Now he's playing. Um, filling in uh, and playing with the yes. S mm -hmm. uh, and uh, Michael T. Ross, uh, Phil Susan from Last in Line, Andrew Freeman uh, from Last in Line and uh, Offspring. And it's just a great cast of people and uh, Mark Bowles. It's, uh, it's an honor to be on the stage with those guys every night. And Rowan Robertson yeah. was, uh, uh, from D.O. And it's just... Uh, if anybody hasn't seen the show, please come and see it. It's uh, it's a lot of fun. It's a uh, it's a great journey. Uh, it's a history lesson. We're going to have our mm -hmm. thousand show coming up here uh, in 25th November. Twenty fifth of November that weekend. I'll yeah. be there for that one. No doubt about yeah, it. Yeah, it's good. Yeah, it's uh, it's been uh, it's an amazing run because a lot of shows here in Las Vegas don't last that long. Yeah. Hey, it's one of my favorite shows. It gives me a reason to, whenever I come out to Vegas, if, like, REO's not in town, then you guys are my only stop, you know? Ah, uh, and I forgot Dave Amato is it? Yeah, when he's Dave. not with them. He's in, and what a great player and a great guy. I've known him for years. Actually, I got him in the, into the, I convinced him to come into the show. <laughs> I'm glad you did. And I he loves it. When he had played, I believe it was, earlier this was it earlier this year i third yeah. last year it was that uh valentine's day weekend where he had his first i think somewhere around there it was like his first run with you guys and it was a cool that run. was at the trough yeah 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 no that was last year yeah sorry yeah that's cool and uh i remember when uh andrew and Mark had did the Han Valen show at Vamp, the first one. You were also there singing on uh, oh. a couple of the songs, uh, Beautiful Girl. Uh, was it Running With the Devil, yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. I, I told him, yeah, I, they said, you want to come up and sing? And I, I hadn't sang any, man, any of those songs in so long. And I said, wow, I used to do Running With the Devil. Yeah. And... and I went up there with a martini. I remember you being in the audience. Oh, that was ah, such a right fun. Right up front there, brother, man. That was such a fun night, man. Yeah. It was uh, actually, uh, what about a oh, few weeks after the closing of Raiding the Rock Vault at the Trop? And you guys right. were over there having a blast. 
<laughs> yeah, those guys are a lot of fun. Oh, yeah. And uh, not a lot of people know this, but you are a a minister and you do weddings as well. A rock yes, and roll I minister. do. A rock and roll wedding. <laughs> uh, we've done a we did a few with some of the rating the rock vault mm-hmm. people and um, and uh, I you know I do them once in a while here and there yeah I like to do them for close friends mm-hmm. and um, uh, they had a package together at one time to get ready get married by a rock star mm-hmm. uh, when that. we were at uh, the Tropicana they had a uh, uh, chapel there. Yeah, and I did. I did probably a dozen weddings there, while we were at uh, Trop. And um, I, uh, I, I, I like doing it. I like. Uh, I, I, I've been married twenty six years, and mm. um, and uh, I, I believe in marriage. I think it's a good thing when you find the right person. And uh, oh, yeah. I was lucky to find Carmen, and she's uh, the other better half of my of 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 me. She keeps my shit together, so to speak. <laughs> awesome. Keeps me grounded. Keeps yeah. reminding me, you know. <laughs> That's so cool. I'm well, glad you guys have been married for so long, and then you guys are happy together with uh, two I mean, two amazing dogs, Elvis and uh, Dio, correct? Yeah, we got four, actually. Four. Elvis, I'm Dio, sorry. Trixie, and Ringo. Two, uh, uh, Ringo and Dio are from Spain. They're, uh, they're called Padankos mm-hmm. and, um, they're an interesting breed. They've been bred for about a thousand years. I think they came from Egypt and, uh, mm-hmm. they're like a miniature, uh, greyhound. They have three hounds that, mm-hmm. um, the Spanish breed that is the Padanko, the, the Galgos and, uh, uh the greyhound. So those are the three breeds that they have, and um, they all so, they all similar. Yeah, they're just different sizes. But uh, the Padankos are uh, they 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 hunt on sight and scent. Mm-hmm. How's Elvis doing, by the way? Uh he's you he's know he's better. getting by. Yeah. yeah, he is. He's getting you know we we're just making him comfortable. He's. Uh, He's 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 got arthritis. He's got mm-hmm. you know he's he's got some issues, but you know he's comfy now. We've got him on uh, we got him on the pot. <laughs> That's good to hear. There's there's some there's some liquid uh, oil that uh, yeah. we give him, and uh, he's also on some anti-inflammatories and some pain medication. So he's mm-hmm. he's doing better. He had cancer, and we had to lose. He had to lose his tail, oh, oh. so they all think Sorry. he's a Rottweiler when they see him. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and you're involved with a lot of the ASPCA stuff. I know you guys do a, um, an often bowling event that uh, it's a charity event, correct? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Any charity events that we can do uh, mm-hmm. for uh, to raise awareness for animals mm-hmm. who haven't don't have a voice and also homeless vets yeah and um my cane uh, that i use in the show remo remo uh yeah his my cane is remo and uh remo tuliani uh gifted uh, me a dozen of those to auction off and uh he just contacted me uh, mm-hmm. and carmen from italy and He's making up a new batch of them for me, uh, and they have my signature on them. So wow. we auctioned them off, and uh, and we've gotten some good money for them. We've got up to eighteen hundred dollars for uh, one Staffordshire cane, mm-hmm. and uh, all the proceeds go to the NSPCA. Saves a lot of dogs. Yeah. So so uh, every once in a while we auction them off, uh-huh. and uh, like I said, he's. Uh, he just con- contacted us and is going to gift us a, a dozen more to uh, be able to raise money and awareness for homeless vets and yeah. uh, homeless dogs. That's awesome. And Remo is the one cool cane. I was actually going to ask you about that. And funny enough, our friend Ernie actually has one of those as well. Yes, he got one at one of the... Uh, 
uh, silent auctions at the NSPCA, one of the events. He's a great supporter of uh, all of the uh, uh, Las Vegas community uh, events that we have here. Ernie's a great guy. He yeah, really he is. He's a cool guy to hang out with, that's for sure. Yeah. Uh, talk a little bit gotta, about King Cobra and that, how that went about. Well, Carmine uh, was up here to do a show and um, with the Sin City Sinners and Dave Henserling uh, came up and um, I, I did this couple songs. I did Hunger mm-hmm. and um, uh, I think it was um, Keep Me Hanging On and uh, they uh David came up and he brought up a couple songs on a hard drive and we went mm-hmm. into my studio and me and Carmine had did stuff uh, in the past where we didn't know that we were on the same record together. We did uh, a thing um, called uh, A Tribute to Queen Dragon mm-hmm. uh, and uh, we did We Are the Champions and We Will Rock You with Rob. Carmine was playing drums and I sang on there mm-hmm. and Robbie Krieger played guitar. So we had did, and then he had did some stuff on back on track. And so, uh, he asked me if I'd be interested in doing a record with King Cobra. And, uh, mm-hmm. so we did some songs, rock this house and, um, a few other songs. And, um, next thing I know we were doing a record and, um, and it was a good record and, uh, mm-hmm. we didn't tour. And then um, we were asked to do another record. And uh, then we decided to go out and do some shows. And uh, that's pretty much about it. And I don't know where the band is right now. I'm I'm one of those singers that they all call. And then mm-hmm. we do a record. And then yeah, we're lucky if uh, we tour. I also did a record with Carmine with a guy named Javier Vargas. And we toured Spain and Europe. Mm-hmm. And he's a blues guitarist, and we did a record on Warner Brothers in Spain uh, called Vargas, Bogart, mm-hmm. and A Piece featuring Paul Shortino. And then I did another record with Javier. Uh-huh. But there's some uh, video footage out there of a song called Lady. And uh, on YouTube, um, of uh, it's an old Bogart uh, it's uh, basically Bogart, Apathy, and mm-hmm. uh, uh, Beck yeah. off of their album called Lady, and um, we did a remake of it, and uh, we did a video, and it's pretty cool. And then we also did That's a awesome. video with Vargas on If You Think I'm Sexy. <laughs> so that's on you. That's on YouTube too. It's kind of a heavy version. I'm gonna look that uh, up. of that. So. And that's how I got involved with Carmine, and uh, we've known each other for a long time, and, uh, and he's a legend, and it's an honor to do anything with him. That's cool, and I've listened to both of those albums, and they rock, man. <laughs> they really do. Yeah, I uh, I really like some of the material. There's some really good songs on there. David uh, David Henserling is a really good guitar uh, songwriter. Uh, he wrote a lot of the material on that, and Mick, uh, mm-hmm. Sueda, uh, really good stuff. Uh, it was really an uh, honor to buy. I, I was hoping that uh, we would do some more records, but I don't know how it's going to go. Everybody's got like a tight schedule. Yeah, and uh, you know things are a lot different now in the in the in the world we live in. So yeah. uh, we recently. Uh, I, we've done some demos uh, with Rough Cut. Uh-huh. I don't know what. Uh, I think uh, they're shopping a deal. I, I'm not sure what's going on. Uh, It'd be but great the songs to hear are. Record. Yeah, the songs are really good. We've we've recorded five, mm-hmm. half of a record, and it's uh, an LP. Uh, it's some really good songs, some really good songs, really good direction, mm-hmm. really positive meaning and attitudes. Um, you did a lot of uh, side projects as well as cover tunes. Um, some of the songs you did, you did uh, Eggman for a Sonic the Hedgehog, kind of 
thing. You did a cover of Holiday, which is a Scorpion song. You sang on that, yeah. as well as Let There Be Rock and We Are the Champions. Um, talk about how those, uh, recording those, and then you did one called with the Michael Croson group called Burn the Earth. Yes. That, that was interesting. That, that was like a Robin Trower album. Yeah. Those tribute records were uh, through Cleopatra, a lot of them. Mm-hmm. And um, I just also did one with Michael Voss, who does a lot of stuff with Michael Shanker. And mm-hmm. um, we did uh, Wheel in the Sky by Journey. That's awesome. And uh, uh, it's a really good track. I'll have to send that to you. I have that on my phone. So uh, I never got a copy of it uh, yet. Uh, but, but I got a, I got, I got the, ver- I got the version that we did and, and looks like, let me see. Oh, holy, yeah, there we go. My battery on my phone is dying. Oh. So I flipped it over. Gotcha. There we go. So, uh, yeah. So I, uh, a lot of those uh, tribute records were um, um, through Cleopatra, and um, uh, I, the uh, holiday one um, was really interesting how we did that because um, we uh, didn't have any drums or anything. I showed up with my acoustic, and and me and Matt Thor, we uh, from Rough Cut. He was he was he was the engineer, and I uh, believe he mixed it and did everything and. We came up with this uh, kind of middle, uh, this Indian kind of vibe, and we put tablas to it and added some strings. And next thing I know, George Lynch was playing on that guitar oh, solo on that. So uh, it was interesting how that come about. We kind of just kind of came up with our own arrangement on the spot. Um, all the other ones, they uh, the champions and. Uh, mm-hmm. We Will Rock You, that stuff was recorded, and uh, I did that with Billy Sherwood. And then I did some stuff with um, Bruce and uh, Bob Kulik. I think that was Let, Let There Be Rock, uh, ACDC tribute. Yeah. And um, so, yeah, they were a lot of fun, you know. Uh, it's always fun to get in the studio and do stuff. Uh, uh, I, I really like to go in the studio and... and uh, and take stuff like on this new record uh, with Carmine, uh, Drum Wars. They uh, they sent me some tracks. I did uh, a song with uh, Joel Huska from mm. uh, White Snake. We did a song called War Cry, and then I I did another song that this was an instrumental uh, uh, guitarist mm-hmm. uh, named Chris. I am not sure of his last name. He's in France, and. Uh, made this song uh, called Suddenly It's Happening, and I mm-hmm. came up with the title because it was really hard to come up with. It was a instrumental song, yeah. and I had to find places to put lyrics, and so it kind of fell into place, and uh, uh, I came up with... I, I told my wife, I says, wow, suddenly it's happening, and that's I, I finally came, and that's with the chorus... Suddenly it's happening, suddenly it's happening, suddenly it's happening, originality, you know. Yeah. But that's how I came up with the chorus was because uh, it was it was like beating my head against a wall. I didn't know where am I going to sing, but it's a really cool song. That's awesome, man. Like the lick of the guitar in that part is like... And it's a six eight thing. Suddenly it's happening, and the guitars are going. Amazing! This guy's an amazing guitar player. So, it's just a trip how it came about. That's cool. Did you have? Do you have any favorite venues that you performed at over at the Sunset Strip? Back in the day, um, I'd say you know all the or Roxy. favorite overall of all the venues you've gotten to play over the years. Do you have uh, any favorites that you really love and would love to return to? 
Well, um, it's interesting because I uh, saw Led Zeppelin in this 1972, I think it was, mm -hmm. at the Forum, and I said I really want to play here someday. And uh, right after we, and I also wanted to get signed to Warner Brothers, and mm -hmm. Rough Cut got signed to Warner Brothers. So that was a dream come true. And then we opened up for Ronnie with Dawkin at uh, the Forum, That's which awesome. was a dream, which was a dream come true. So uh, I guess that that would I would say playing the Forum in Los Angeles was a dream come true. But one of the best shows I that uh, I remember ever playing and was sold out was uh, the Spectra in uh, Philadelphia. They had lit the audience. It was a Sacred Heart tour. Rough Cut was warming oh, yes. up for Ronnie. Awesome. Uh, well, oh, we're gonna wrap this up real quick. But um, before before we wrap this up, do you have any interesting road tales that you'd like to share? Something f like cool, funny, or whatnot from your past that you'd like to share? Uh, yeah, I uh, I got. I've got one here where um, we were in Rough Cut. Mm -hmm. Well, actually, uh, there's two of them. One was with Rough Cut, and there's quite a few. But yeah. uh, one with Rough Cut, we were uh, in uh, Canada, yeah, uh, way up in Jacutami area, mm -hmm. and it's very French province. Not very, uh, no speaking English up there. They don't speak yeah. very much English. All French. And I, I got off the bus and went into the bathroom, and um, the men's bathroom was messy, so I had to do a sit-down thing, and I went into the female's bathroom, and I was sitting there with an inquirer reading, and all my passport and everything, I was in slippers and sweats, and it was snowing so uh -huh. heavily that it wasn't cold out. Yeah. When it snows really hard, it's, you know, uh, the snow, uh, it's not as cold out. So oh, yeah. I heard the bus drive away so i ran out i had oh slippers God. on and i finally caught them oh. and i was sopping wet and uh, i uh i was able to get catch up with the bus otherwise i would have uh i would have been left and oh then they would have God. had to find me somewhere <laughs> and uh and i mean in japan um uh quiet riot we were leaving japan and i had packed a uh uh, looked like a uh, Dirty Harry pistol, 44 yeah. Magnum, but it was a plastic gun for my yeah. son, and it was in my luggage, and they had a high alert at that time, oh and um, they uh, put my luggage through the scanners, and they showed oh. that gun, and I was look. I, I at the time, me and Sean and Carlos were uh, eating. Yeah, and I we came back and we saw all of these uh, Japanese security guys and all the rest of quiet guy, riot guys and crew were up against the wall and oh no <laughs> and and, and uh, anyways they sorted it out that mm -hmm. it was uh, it was pretty hectic and uh, I got I got I got a I got an earful for that but I had told them <laughs> I had packed that but they didn't remember so. Oh. Um, but those were some funny things. I one last thing. I was watching uh, when Carmen was going live when you guys were doing conversations with Norman. You had that embarrassing story, and I wanted to ask you about that. Was that how the character was based off for Rain the Rock Vault, where he was telling where they were telling the story oh, on MTV? Oh, that's probably the most embarrassing story. Yes, I know which one you're talking about. Yeah. That was on my 60th birthday. Yeah. Was that I was in Spain. Off? Yeah, well, actually, yes. It was in. They took the story, and I gave it to them for Rock mm -hmm. Vault and when we had a script. I was in Spain, and we had a day off, and uh -huh. um, I went – took a bath. I used to take a bath after every show and then I'd mm -hmm. go and put my sweats on and go to bed because uh -huh. we had to get up early and get on the bus and we'd have breakfast. And so this particular night we had a day off. So I went to bed nude uh -huh. and I had these dark glasses. These are prescriptions. Mm -hmm. And I had these dark glasses on because my other glasses had broke mm -hmm. and I fell asleep reading, woke up in the middle of the night 
went out to go to the bathroom and walked out the front of the my hotel room and locked myself out of the room oh, nude. Shit. So I had to go down a. Um, first of all, I had I still had to pee, so I went and peed in the trash can. Yeah. And then I had to go down a glass elevator through oh, no. flights <laughs> oh, and get get my key to get back into my room. So when we uh, started having rock tales in the um, they were changing the script around for rating the rock vault. I submitted that story, and they they elaborated it a little yeah. bit and put the paparazzi for Ricky yeah. Quinn when he went down. And so, yeah, that's probably one of my most embarrassing stories, oh, and uh, that well, I will live with that forever. <laughs> <laughs> when I had heard that, I'm like, wait a minute, I'm trying to put two and two together. Uh, I'm like, did that story get incorporated into the show? I'm like, yeah, I yeah, gotta yeah. ask him. Yeah. Yes, That's yes, awesome. it was, and I. That was a good rock tale, actually. Now, oh, yeah. now that you brought that up, that's probably one of my most embarrassing. That was a senior <laughs> moment at its, at its finest. But oh, um, yeah, it's been a pleasure hanging with you, brother. And hey, your fans. Thank, thank you so much for doing this. I really appreciate it. Um, you get a chance, everybody, go see Rating the Rock Vault at the Vinyl Room at the Hard Rock Hotel in Las Vegas from Saturday night to Wednesday night. Also, if you're in Lima, Ohio, next Saturday, go and check out Paul Shortino at Elktoberfest. And go check out Rough Cut at Vamped on uh, November 11th. Yeah, thank you, Thank Paul. you so much. Thank you, Nelson. God bless you and everybody you out too. there. Peace, love. I'll, s- I'll, see, I'll see you, you soon, soon, man. Take care. All right, buddy. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.